Hey everybody, it's your friend and your guy who wears shirts that are just lovable, Gardner. So today we're going to talk about a uh, an article that I've seen pop up a couple times through uh, all of my different news feeds. Uh, the title of this thing, oh wait, what is the title of this? Windows 10 isn't the most vulnerable operating system, it's actually Linux. Wow. All right, this I've seen this across a whole bunch of different uh, news outlets, Tech Radar, uh, a couple others. That is probably one of the most disingenuous and just completely wrong titles I've ever seen. So the whole premise of this is the National Institute of Science and Technology, or NIST, uh, just released. Uh, they've they've ranked uh, vulnerabilities reported last year for. Uh, for operating systems and other software and uh, a bunch of people did some uh, math and figured out that uh, apparently Linux is the most vulnerable operating system. I just find that to be absolutely hilarious. I mean, it might sound counterintuitive to uh, people who actually understand how uh, <laughs> vulnerabilities work, how open source software works, but uh, let's, let's get into this because I think that this is a kind of an insane uh, proposition for people to be putting out there. Like what the, what the heck? So uh, I found, uh, the best VPN.com had, uh, some, uh, infographics that I'm going to actually borrow for this video. Uh, there's a link in the description to that, uh, post. If you want to, uh, see the full thing with all the infographics, I'm just looking at the ones that I think are most interesting and relevant, um, to this, Topic. So the first infographic we're going to look at uh, is breaking down vulnerabilities by vendor. Um, number one on the list is Microsoft with 6,814 vulnerabilities. And, and that's a lot. That breaks down to 12.9 uh, vulnerabilities per product. Next, we have Oracle with 6,115. And that breaks down to 9.5 uh, issues per product. And as we scroll down the list, we eventually find our way to Linux. Now, I wouldn't really consider Linux to be a software vendor. Uh, the Linux kernel uh, is its own thing. But let, let's talk about this. This number is very interesting because up until this point, we've been looking at a software company, the number of vulnerabilities they have, and the like the average number of vulnerabilities per product that's listed on NIST's website. But here's Linux. This is this is the Linux one. 2,370 reported vulnerabilities. And that breaks down to an average of 139.4 vulnerabilities per product. Okay, the, this is a very nebulous. I don't understand where like this number is coming from. Like what what is a Linux product, right? So we, we scroll down a little bit because I'm like trying to figure out like this. I'm walking you through my whole process here as I'm reading this article because I'm like, what what does this even mean, right? I'll quote the article. Linux was identified in the NIST's national vulnerability database as experiencing the most reported vulnerabilities per product at 139.4, which is likely because, get this, the software company is relatively young and has fewer products. What are we talking about? What are we talking about? Linux is not a software company. Uh, are you talking about like the Linux foundation? So I, I went to the Linux foundation website and I looked at the list of projects that the Linux foundation actually lists on their website, right? So I actually, uh, so I count the number of things. Well, I don't count because, you know, if you're a programmer, you don't have to count. I use the uh, console to look up how many projects are listed on the page. And apparently there are 170 projects listed on the Linux Foundation's website. And so if you do the math, that breaks down to 13.9 vulnerabilities per project on the Linux Foundation's website. Now, obviously 139.4 is not 13.9. In fact, that's a hundred times less than uh, what NIST is reporting here. So that would make me think that there are 17 products listed according to NIST's vulnerability database that are coming from Linux, the company, whatever, bro. So I did, I did a little digging a little bit. I go onto their website and I find that indeed there are actually only 17 
projects, software products coming from Linux. Most of them seem to be either different versions of Linux for different hardware architectures or different tools for developing Linux or <laughs> system D. <laughs> so what is going on over there? Anyway, so this, this infographic, needless to say, is kind of bunk. And that number really doesn't make any sense. Like if you understand Linux at all, if you understand the Linux kernel, uh, the Linux foundation, how any of this works, that is a completely arbitrary and meaningless number when you compare it to the output of software product, or software companies, right? Like it just is a, is a completely meaningless number. All right, so let's look at the not next one then, the, the, the top 20 products over the last 20 years with the most technical vulnerabilities. So number one on this list over the last 20 years is Debian Linux. Now, Debian was actually released in 1996. It has remained a consistently updated and uh, maintained project. And in fact, Debian is one of the oldest distributions out there. It's one of the oldest Linux-based operating systems in the world. Uh, so it's no wonder that in the last 20 years, it tops the list of vulnerabilities reported for it. That's fine, okay, whatever. Number two is Android. Now Android is based on the Linux kernel, but in every other way, shape and form, it has nothing to do with Linux. Uh, just about every other piece of software that's built on top of the Linux kernel for Android is Android only. And it really, there's no comparison between Android and a desktop Linux operating system. But it also is the number one most popular uh, operating system in the world, so it makes sense, again, that it's in the top two. Number three over the last 20 years is the Linux kernel. Uh, the Linux kernel, again, that makes sense. The Linux kernel has been in development since 1993, I think. Uh, and so in that time, you know, there have been a lot of uh, problems reported with it. It's It basically runs the entire world except for <laughs> the desktop operating system. So it makes sense, again, that there would be uh, a lot of development, a lot of security research uh, following the Linux kernel over the last 20 years. We go down the list, we have Mac OS, and Ubuntu rounds out the top five with 2007 vulnerabilities reported. Now what's unclear here is if uh, problems that affect both Ubuntu and Debian are reported separately. I, I don't know the answer to that question. Uh, but as we go down the list, we have uh, the iPhone, iOS, uh, with 1,600 vulnerabilities, Windows Server 2008 with 1,400, Windows 7 with 1,200, Windows 10 with 1,100, and uh, Windows Server 2012 rounding out the top uh, 20 products with 1,050 over the last uh, 20 years. Fair. Okay, that's, uh, that's fair enough. Now, what's interesting to me is that over the last 20 years, we've gone through <laughs> several different versions of Windows being uh, the dominant. We have Windows 2000, Windows XP, Vista, uh, 7, 8, and 10, and that's not counting server uh, versions. And so that's six. That's six different desktop operating systems coming from the Windows product family. And all of the reports for those things are, are separate because they're separate products. Whereas in the, the, the Linux world, distributions go on forever and ever. I mean, there's very little end in sight in terms of Debian. Uh, and so and the different versions of Debian aren't being broken down like the different versions of Windows seem to be. So that might be the reason that there are artificially high uh, or comparatively high uh, vulnerabilities uh, being reported for Debian and Linux, whereas with it, when it comes to Windows, um, the, the numbers seem artificially low. But this infographic also has uh, the, the number of uh, vulnerabilities reported in the year 2019. Uh, so let's talk about those. In 2019, Android was the number one most vulnerable operating system, or I guess piece of software, uh, with 414 uh, vulnerabilities reported. Uh, that's a lot, but also keep in mind, again, Android is the most popular operating system in the entire world. The next is Debian with 360. Again, Debian is one of the most popular Linux distributions uh, out there. 
Uh, Ubuntu is built on top of it. There are many other distributions that are built on top of it. So I think that makes quite a bit of sense that Debian has a huge number of reported vulnerabilities. Um, but let's talk about the actual total number of vulnerabilities per, I don't know what you would call it, operating system architecture. You have the Linux-based ones and you have the Windows-based ones, or let's call them NT-based because kernels. If you total the number of vulnerabilities per platform, per architecture for Linux versus Windows, you end up with 1,148 for Linux and 2,286 for Windows. Um, and that's just on this list. This isn't counting uh, anything else besides what's on this list right here in front of you right now. Now, obviously, there are many vulnerabilities that are going to be shared between products. Again, something that uh, affects Ubuntu is probably also going to affect Debian, at least uh, on the surface of it. And the same goes for Windows. I mean, something that affects Windows 10 is probably going to affect uh, Windows Server 2019. So I think it's kind of a moot point. But the fact is, there are more Windows vulnerabilities on this list than there are Linux vulnerabilities on this list. And that's when you even include Android, which is hardly Linux, right? <laughs> At worst, I think this list is is uh, misleading, and at best, it's providing an incomplete picture, uh, especially for people who do not understand any of this stuff. It's not taking into account the longevity of some of these problems either. While there are a few bugs that have spanned decades uh, when it comes to Linux, Microsoft kind of takes the cake here. They are focused on legacy support. They're focused on making sure that old software written for Windows 3.1 still works for Windows 10. I'm being a little hyperbolic here, but you get the picture I'm trying to paint, right? The fact is, open source software is more secure by its very nature. The fact that these small bugs and these big bugs are all being reported and all being fixed, so long as there's a healthy development community around the project, uh, it, it makes for better software all around. Where on Windows, there are so many old bugs that span decades. I mean, in 2014, Microsoft patched a bug that affected Windows all the way back to Windows 95, okay? In 2016, they plugged a watering hole attack that allowed printers to install malware on the Windows system. And just last year, a Google researcher found a vulnerability in Microsoft's text service framework that affected Windows all the way back to Windows XP. Ugh. I don't really know how to end this video, but uh, don't believe the hype. Windows is far more insecure than Linux. Uh, it is far more insecure than Linux. There's no comparison here. If you do the math, if you look at the facts, Linux is the most secure operating system, even with all these vulnerabilities being reported. Uh, I just wanted to say thank you to everyone who watched this video. Uh, you guys are the reason I continue to do what I do. I love it here. I love being uh, able to talk to you guys and talk about like all the cool stuff that happens in the Linux world. And uh, so yeah, thank you so much. If you believe in the work that I do, you can support this show on Patreon. There's gonna be a link in the description. Um, you can get your name plastered here. I'm sorry it's not there right now, but I'm um, having server issues. Got to fix those server problems, uh, but it should be back by next time. <laughs> um, and if you want to see the latest videos that I produce uh, before they go live on YouTube, I have my videos now going live on library, lbry.tv slash at the Linux gamer. And I've resolved the issue uh, with the double uploads that was happening. Uh, thanks to everybody at library for being awesome and working with me on that. Uh, but yeah, that's going to do it for this video. Thank you so much for watching. I'll see you guys in the next one. Bye.